everybody, Luna here, and this week we are going to discuss a slightly controversial topic. Slightly spicy, one might say. Today we're going to be talking about fudging things behind the DM screen. Before we jump into it, I want to let you know that I am actually running a giveaway at the moment, so if you want to find out about all the details, keep watching because I will tell you later in the video. So the first rule about fudging things is that we apparently don't talk about fudging things. I ran a poll on my Twitter uh, a few weeks ago asking people their opinions about fudging and whether or not it was something they did at the table. And a lot of people said to me, please make sure that you put at the beginning of your video that it is only for Dungeon Masters and that players shouldn't watch it, which I found very interesting. I like this idea that we talk about fudging as something that happens behind the DM screen, but we all kind of collectively pretend that it never happens, which I just find that kind of interesting. I think it's something that perhaps should be spoken about a little bit more freely and also discussed with your players when you're setting up your campaign. Oh, and Molly's scratching at the door. Coming in. So I think fudging things is kind of a bit of, a, I guess, controversial topic because people do tend to have very strong feelings about it one way or the other. So first up, let's talk a little bit about what fudging is. I think this is also where some of the controversy begins is that people have different opinions about what fudging entails. Generally, I think of fudging as just kind of changing things on the fly during the game to direct the story in a particular way. So you rolled behind the screen, maybe you rolled a natural 20, you didn't want your players to die that day, so you pretend that it didn't happen. We'll also include fudging things as changing things like the monster hit points or the AC, or changing the DC of something after the player has rolled, even though it was perhaps they had a DC set in mind. It was super interesting hearing everybody's responses to my Twitter poll, which I will link below if you wanna go and check it out. Sort of hearing everybody's responses about why they might choose to fudge and why they don't choose to fudge. So I'm gonna outline some of those reasons now and have a look at what people thought about it. First up, let's talk about reasons why you should not fudge the dice behind the DM screen. And one of the biggest ones that came up was that if you already know what you want the outcome or the story to be, what is the point in even getting the players to roll? If you know that you want your players to get on the other side of a door and the door is locked and then you leave it to chance that they might fail at like a lock picking check, then really you shouldn't have got them to roll to begin with if you're just gonna change it to make it so that they got through. This comes back to remembering that things like ability and skill checks uh, they should only have a dice roll if the outcome is uncertain. So if you want the outcome to be certain, then you shouldn't be asking the players to roll the dice to begin with. A lot of people looked at the dice as like a third member of the group. You have the dungeon master, you have the players, and then you have the dice. And so all of those three things interacting is what creates an interesting story uh, with unexpected twists and turns. And if you don't honor what the dice are contributing to the game, then you're kind of missing out on that important storytelling element. A really big one I saw amongst people who said that they don't ever roll the dice is, you know, why should it be okay for the dungeon master to change the dice or change things behind the screen, but not the players? You know, I know personally that I would be horrified if I knew that my players were fudging their dice rolls, but on occasion, sorry players, I have done that myself. So I think that really boils down to this idea of fairness within the game. Obviously D&D or you know other RPGs are not necessarily competitive games. You know, we're, we're not trying to like win against something and it's not like dungeon master versus the players and having that fairness and that everybody is sort of subject to the whims of fate, dungeon master and players included, was a really important part I think for a lot of people who don't like the idea of fudging. And if you're going to ignore the outcome of the dice, it can sometimes feel like you're taking a little bit away from the player's agency. You're not letting their choices matter and their choices be directed by the fate of the dice. If you're just choosing that you want this outcome to happen, then what is the point in the players making choices if you know that, like, if you're gonna be sending them in that direction regardless of, you know, what they roll or what you roll. And lastly, a lot of people said that they never fudge the dice because they roll in front of the screen. And rolling in front of the screen kind of adds a sense of tension and a sense of drama to the game. You know, it really is left to the whims of fate. The dungeon master can't save them. Just, you know, everything is gonna hinge on this next roll and they're all gonna kind of be there together to see it happen. And you know, even for dungeon masters who roll behind a screen, sometimes this can be true as well. Like I've seen uh, Matthew Mercer for, from Critical Role example, occasionally will roll in front of the screen for extremely important story events that everyone is feeling very tense about the outcome of this role. And it kind of does add to that tension and to that drama and knowing that there isn't gonna be some kind of plot armor there. 
So just looking at these comments, so this person says um, that if you're going to fudge the dice already, why not just like write a novel and get it over with if you want the story to go in a particular way. Yeah, and this person has a really good point that um, fudging the dice actually puts a lot of the onus on the DM for the narrative and you know that's a bad thing for the players but it's also a kind of a bad thing for the DM because that puts a lot of pressure on them to I guess craft this story in a particular way and if it doesn't go well then it was kind of you know on them whereas if you're leaving some of it up to chance then it kind of relieves some of that narrative pressure because you can just go well I don't know how this is going to turn out but we're going to see and then we'll go from there. Now we've talked about why you shouldn't fudge the dice Let's talk about why maybe you should. That sometimes as the dungeon master, we miscalculate the challenge rating of an encounter. What we expected to kind of be maybe an easy encounter or just a slightly difficult encounter, turns out to actually be deadly. And for whatever reason, it doesn't feel appropriate for the party to die in this moment or to, you know, suffer heavy losses. I think there is a really important kind of pacing to a game and you know when you're a dungeon master you do kind of want to keep in mind those like ebbs and flows of the story and of the tension and the drama so this might be a time when it's appropriate to kind of I guess fudge things a little bit behind the screen to make it a little bit easier for the players or conversely perhaps you set up a really big boss battle finale you were like this is it this is the finale of the campaign this is gonna be epic and amazing and then for whatever reason through your own misjudgment or through the the luck of the dice the players are just absolutely dominating and it doesn't necessarily feel like a hard won fight and i think for a lot of people and this is true in all genres like movies or books or things generally you want the big finale fight to feel hard you want it to feel insurmountable and then the players or the heroes whatever overcome that challenge and you know it, it, it feels very victorious because it was a hard won fight whereas if they just roll in and they're like Pfft, then it, it can kind of feel a little bit anticlimactic. Sometimes you might want to fudge the dice if you want to give a climactic ending as well to an enemy or to a battle. So perhaps you have one enemy left and you know your player scores a critical hit against them and maybe they had resistance to something and you know you just kind of ignore that or maybe they only had a few hit points left after the damage and you just decide to ignore those hit points and just let the creature die so that that player gets their kind of big narrative moment. And to be completely blunt, sometimes uh, you might fudge the dice to save a character from dying. Perhaps you have a player who you know wouldn't react well to their character dying, it wouldn't feel meaningful or narratively interesting, so you just decide that that critical role you <laughs> had behind the screen was actually just a 12. Maybe you've got someone playing the game for the very first time and they're level one and you know they kind of got in over their head and you don't want them to die in their very first game because what kind of an experience is that? Some people would be absolutely fine with it but others it would be very upsetting to them. I had a friend who died in the first game that they played and then they had to sit around for two hours while everybody else was still playing because their character was dead and they didn't play again for years. But if the DM had maybe fudged a few things, then they would have been playing for all those years. Actually, this person had a really interesting comment about rolling the dice and um, how rolling the dice is actually just theater. Yeah, this person said that rolling the dice is an auditory cue that the players can grab onto. It kind of shows that something of interest is going to happen and it's kind of part of the theater of the game. And I really like that idea. I like this idea of, um, I guess using the tools that we have to kind of build the suspense and build the interest uh, in that kind of theatrical manner. Like how I remember this moment in uh, Fantasy High where Brennan uh, picks up all of the dice in his tray and just rolls them all to, you know, demonstrate how much damage this dragon is doing. You know, he didn't count out how, exactly how many needed. He didn't worry about, you know, how many dice that was gonna be. He just, it was the theater of the moment. He just picked them all up. And the players were all like groaning and covering their eyes and were feeling super nervous and tense about it and you know I think that's kind of a really fun and exciting part of the game. Personally I think of fudging as just changing the dice roll so I don't see changing the hit points or even changing the AC or things like that to be fudging because especially hit points um, you know the stat block the monster stat block gives you a range of hit points which actually means you have a very low amount of hit point threshold and a very high amount of hit points and you can kind of slide up and down that scale depending on what, what is needed in the moment. I don't see that as fudging or cheating, I just see that as part of 
the encounter design that you're doing on the fly. When you sit down and you build your encounter or you take an encounter from an adventure, I don't think you need to be like, well, that's what I said I was gonna do, so that's what I'm doing. I think it's fine to adjust things on the fly, which is what we're doing constantly as Dungeon Masters anyway. You know, we're always adjusting things on the fly when the players say, I'm gonna smash through the window instead of go through the front door. And you're like, okay, cool, roll initiative. Hey, if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, then you get to hear about my giveaway. I am almost at 1000 subscribers, which is very, very exciting. So to celebrate, I'm giving away a book of your choice on D&D Beyond up to 30 bucks, as well as a $25 voucher to drive through RPG. All you need to do to enter is to comment below. Give me your thoughts about fudging. Please keep it respectful. Please remember that this is a game. We all have different opinions and that's okay. And you can also get a bonus entry by going to the tweet in the description and liking and retweeting tweeting that. I will draw the winner when I reach 1000 subscribers so it's also important that you subscribe because otherwise we won't get there. Yeah good luck and I've got some fun things planned for when I hit 1000 subscribers. I've got a little celebration video plan as well as uh, another patron only video. If you want to check out my patreon all the links are below. Well that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I will see you all soon. Bye! Say bye Molly! Bye!